This video will be an introduction into how to use the Earth Wind map. You usually start with a regular looking globe overlay with the surface winds aimed at North, Central, and South America. If you want to move around, it's as simple as clicking and dragging to see whatever part of the globe you would like to see. If you'd like to see the specific statistics or information about whatever overlay you're on at a given location, just click. It'll give you the coordinates and the information. Clicking Earth in the bottom left corner pulls up all the options. We're going to start with the different projections that are available. Some are very useful, others look downright ridiculous. The click and drag to move it around still applies here. I really like this one. and of course the one we started with. This one's pretty trippy. Speaking of downright ridiculous, don't know why you would ever need to use this one. This is the one I use most often for the news. It does put all the landmass on one frame, which you can still click and drag around, but you'll be seeing everything all at once. We're going to stick now with the wind overlay and we're going to go up through the atmosphere. Now we start at the surface, SFC, and as you move down in number, you're actually moving up into the atmosphere, talking about the atmospheric pressure essentially. You start to get up into the vorticity and the jet stream. And both the 70 and the 10 HPA layers are the stratosphere. This is where you begin to see the polar vortices. Right now, it's in the south. We're going to change from air mode to ocean mode. First thing that pulls up is the ocean currents. The faster they are, the red, the slower, the blue. And you can also pull up sea surface temperature. Then finally you can combine them after you scroll to zoom in so we can get a little bit better look. Sea surface temperature but the temperature anomaly and you'll find that this is generally based on the currents. And to find that you go to SSTA or sea surface temperature anomaly. And you can see, indeed, this follows the currents. We're going to switch back to air mode. We're going to pull up the temperature. You can also go back up through the atmosphere. See how warm or cold it is the higher you get. Quite obviously, it's very very cold up in the stratosphere now we're gonna turn on RH or relative humidity and when you do that it doesn't help to be way up in the atmosphere you're gonna to wanna to come back down to either the surface layer or the 1000 layer and give you a pretty good idea of how humid it is in your area Now, something closely related to that but slightly different is the total precipitable water. The water up in the atmosphere that really has a pretty good chance of coming down as precipitation. Even more related and related to the last one is the cloud water. This is where the water is in the clouds easily enough. Then MSLP is mean surface level pressure. That's the high and the low pressure that we were looking at just the other day. 
And then MI is a new one, the Misery Index, basically a combination of heat index, wind chill, basically how comfortable or uncomfortable is it where you are. You can also click no overlay if you'd like, if you just want to see the patterns. Up at control, this is what you're doing is you're controlling time. You can move backwards or forwards into the, some of the projections. You can also turn on a planetary grid, which is useful for a number of reasons. Down at the bottom, you can click about, find all the credits, some more information about the overlays, and uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. That's the Earthwind map, earth.nullschool.net. Be safe, everyone.